guys welcome back to my channel and today's video is going to be um, a what's in my kit video and then also like how did I pack my Zuka cases um, the previous video that I posted last week was about getting my new cases so I wanted to just have a video showing how I pack them and also I get asked a lot what do you have in your kit what do you take with you on location and when you do other people's makeup so I just wanted to create this video to show off what I have in my kit um, so if you'd like to see that continue watching So the first bag that I got was the Zuka Artist Backpack. Um, I have it packed full of stuff. Um, so I'll just start with the outside and then move into the inside. So this top hat pouch right here, I just have like my simple brand makeup wipes. I don't always use these on clients because I feel like when a client shows up with makeup on um, and you use these wipes, there's a residue which sometimes can affect my airbrush system so I, I tend to stay away from those but if someone comes on with a lot of makeup I will have to use that and then I'll just let their face dry um, before applying it. So this little pouch down here, nothing too special, this is just my power cord pouch. So that's my airbrush compressor power cord and then I have an extension cord for my ring light that I bring. So in here what I actually have is in this pouch, I have my water and alcohol, so for cleaning. And then I have trash bags on this side, little handy personal trash bags because you never know when you're going to need one. And then I have my makeup palettes down here in that pouch. In here I have, this is my alcohol to sanitize with in a spray bottle. Um, and then I have my pencil sharpener for eyeliners. In here I have my ring light, like a little phone ring light for pictures. Um, hand sanitizers in here. And then my alcohol wipes that I use. And then in here I have my mirror and I have a cape for clients. So, and then in this pouch what I have is my brush holder, my color switch, and then underneath that is Q-tips. I have my airbrush compressor, my airbrush gun, uh, cotton swabs. I have all my airbrush foundations in their packaging in here. And then I have my lash story that I use for false lashes. So the other bag I have is the Zuka Sport. So in this one, I just have business cards and a pen. This one has, cur this currently has nothing in it. This carries my laptop when I go to my studio. There's nothing in this. And on the other side, my top pouch has gum in it. My second zipper pouch has my dirty brush container in it. So I will swap out brushes and put my dirty ones in that container. And then in the little mesh pouch, I actually have my water bottle. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my Zuka. In this pouch right here, I have tissues that uh, I use for cleaning products off when I sanitize. And I actually need to restock those. In this pouch right here, I have my shadow shields, band-aids, and... A snack because sometimes you're on the set or you're just at an all-day shoot and you might need a snack so I have that one in there just in case I forget because I'm most of the time good about bringing my snacks um, but that's just in, ca in case I get hungry and in this bottom portion right here is all my tools so like scissors and uh, scrapers for product and eyelash curler so that's what's in there so the next thing is inside I have my brush rolls which these just hold my makeup brushes I have two of those okay so 
I have these two cases in here as well on top of everything. So the first one is just my disposable um, wands that I use. There's a company that sells something similar to this and I'm not going to bust them out because I'm nice and they have a great product but for their case they charge the middle one was $30 and yes it does come with wands and stuff but if you're ordering your own wands already you are probably saving money so I didn't want to spend $30 on that product just to have something a little bit bigger than this so what I did is I actually went to Hobby Lobby and I found these containers for $3.99 I think $4.99 and you can um, customize the like portions so yeah I got this and it works just fine and I saved a bunch of money so the other one I have is just for my eyeliners and my mascara um, and brow pencils because I really don't want them floating around in my case and I was like well how can I organize them so I just bought one of these for those two same case as the other one from Exposes. Okay, I'm actually going to back my Zuka up now because we're actually going to get into the, the actual bags. So the first bag I have, this is one of the small sized Zuka bags. Um, this one looks a little messy, but it's just because it has all my little face prepping products in it or just little products that I may need. So for example, this is the first one I'll dig into if I'm starting someone's face. So I have my Embryolay, em, I always say it wrong. It's em, Embryolays, em, Embryolise. I think it's Embryolise. Anyways, there are lotions. So the Hydro Mat is for oily skin. Um, and I actually go through this fast. It's really expensive. Uh, I actually need to order some more, but this is really good if you have combination skin. So if your skin gets really oily, but you're dry, this is the lotion. Now for everyone else that I have is just their normal cream. Um, and this one actually makes me oily because I have that combination skin where I need the Hydro Matte. Uh, but for everyone else, this it works wonders. Um, it takes away the hard winter skin for people. Uh, I've had a lot of boudoir clients show up with horribly dry skin. Um, and this, this stuff works wonders. So that is my face prepping. Uh, so that's the lotion I use. And then this is the lip ointment I use for someone who may have really, really, really dry lips. It works amazingly. And then I have my Krylon circles for concealers. So my color neutralizer and then my just concealer one. Um, and then I have a, um, this one is a primer from Krylon. So if someone isn't super dry um, or I have someone who has mature skin, I'll actually use this to help with filling in um it fills in pores too so i use that one for this and then this is just a makeup th thinner for my creams that i have um i have a bunch of duo glue because that is the best eyelash glue ever now I, I forgot this amazing little thing this is from embryolise too and it is an under eye primer um it helps with refreshing your eyes so you will put this on your client and it will help depuff an eye and it helps with the darkness under someone's eye now you're supposed to use it like under your eye but since I put this on clients I scoop out the product and use a brush I'm not sure if I get the same effect which is really disappointing because I like how this feels um, I have one of my own that I use and I just swoop it under the eye and it has a cooling sensation. I have applied it with a brush and I don't feel that same sensation on myself. So, but I mean it still helps when I use it the way to be safe on everybody. Um, and then I have my Anastasia Beverly Hills brow gel in here. Um, really good. So if you have like flyaway brows. 
you can just use this gel to help put those back in place. I have uh, the Makeup Forever Aqua Seal. I rarely, rarely use this. Um, this helps make the makeup waterproof. Now, my airbrush foundation is already water resistant. So if you cry, it won't mess it up. If you have sweat, it won't mess it up. But if you're going underwater, I would probably use this on you. Um, again, I haven't used this in a long time. Um, because like the, the makeup I have is really good. And I used to use this with my previous makeup brand. Because um, it was a water-based airbrush that needed to be sealed so I would use this but now I don't have to do that so I think I just have this in my kit just in case so then I have my eye primers so this one is the Too Faced Shadow Assurance and this is the glitter glue one um, I sometimes use this this is just extra sticky and it helps keep glitter on your eye and then this one which I have two of and holy moly I've been this one has no no branding on it anymore. It's almost gone. So I will just use this one to explain. So this is my Lorac Behind the Scenes Eyeshadow Primer. This is the best. I used to be a Urban Decay um, shadow primer person. And then I started using this. And I have not gone back. Sorry Urban Decay. Lorac got you on this one. So that's what I have in there. So the next thing I have is um, a variety of other primers. So these two are pore reducer primers and then I have the photo finish primer. These aren't my go-to but I have them in my kit just, just in case because you never know. You never know if you need to um, have a product that helps cover pores a little better. And then the other two products in this bag, because I've gotten to the bottom of it, um, are the Estila Magnificent Metals Glitter and Glow Eyeshadows. So these are just two that I have. I have a whole crap ton because I love these. I actually have um, one on now. I, I just love these products. And I actually use these sometimes for bridal looks. I had a couple this past bridal season. Um, that I use them on people and I love it and the shadows hold up they're great there's minimal fallout um, so yeah I just have right now I just have smoky storm and diamond dust in my kit so this next one is my setting spray and other liquid stuff so I'm gonna go through this one will be a really quick one to go through and this is a large pouch so, um, the large pouch versus the little, so, this one's a large. Okay, in this one, now some of these products are in plastic bags, because I don't know if they leak, and if they were to leak, I don't want them to create a mess, so I've put some in bags, so don't judge me, just being safe. Okay, so the first thing that I have is another product by Embryolese. I think I'm saying that right. I don't know. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing it wrong because I really love this brand. And I, I hope I'm saying the right name. Anyway, so this is a makeup remover. I actually used this for the first time on a client this past weekend who um, came with just a little light foundation on um, to a shoot. And she said that it felt amazing on her skin. I've used it on myself. Um, and it, it's amazing. It smells really good. And most, most of my makeup removers don't remove eyelash glue from my eyes. For some odd reason, I just have gentle... Well, not, not gentle, but I have sensitive eyes. So if I, like, scrub, 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 it hurts. So, so most of the time you'll still see me rocking around two days later with eyelash glue on and it's gross. I hate it. I use it and again it takes everything off. It is amazing. It is a little pricey. Just a little. But I feel like all the products from Embryolise are expensive but they're worth it. They're I think a company based out of France. 
um, or like maybe, I don't know. They're really good though and worth the money. Okay, so enough rambling about that product. The next product I have that is also in a bag is a holy grail I found. If you get oily when you wear makeup, this is a product that you need. I use this on myself um, for event makeup and I get really oily. So I get oily in my T-zone a lot uh, and my makeup will move and I'll get super shiny. This stuff, if you put it on, so you use the little cotton swab um, things that I showed earlier and you just pat it on your skin and let it dry, it creates a barrier and somehow you do not like oil off your makeup. Now this is by Muron and is the Skin Prep Pro and I use it on just people who get extra oily. Um, but you moisturize first and then put this on. And th like I said, this is a holy grail. I love this stuff. Um, I would not, I would cry if I didn't have it in my kit because it definitely helps with people who have oily skin. Okay, let's see. The next product is my Max Fix Plus. Uh, most people know what this is and I've used a lot of it. Um, if you don't know, it is a setting spray. You can use it as a setting spray, but for me, what I use it as is um, I wet my brushes with it for when I want product to stick more to it. So that tends to be like more shimmery shadows or sometimes you'll see me doing eyeliner with a shadow. I know you're like, oh, eyeliner with a shadow? I will spray this down on um, the applicator I'm using or the brush I'm using and I use it as eyeliner on people. Um, it works really well and so far as no one has not liked my eyeliner that I've done. So that's just what I do. I do have eyeliner pencils. So if a different color is needed or something, yeah. So that's what I use that for. Um, the next thing that I have that's also in a bag right now is my RCMA setting powder. This stuff is amazing. Uh, I don't feel like it adds anything to you. But it also doesn't take away anything, if that even makes sense. I feel like this is a really good setting powder. I've used an Urban Decay setting powder. I've used the Ben Nye setting powder. And then when I got to this one, this was the one that made me say, Oh honey, you need this in your life. So I stocked this in my kit to set con um, concealers and help set the face. Now with airbrush, you typically don't have to set the face. But sometimes I just use it as an extra, just powdering someone's face too. Or even a highlighter, like, not like a highlighter, but just helping the concealer areas and uh, under eye areas, if that makes sense. So the last thing I have in here are my setting sprays. Now the first spray that I have by Scandinavia is their makeup primer spray, and this is for oil control. So what I'll do is I'll spray it on someone. Um, I tend not to grab it all the time for someone who has oily skin because I, I tried it on myself and I feel like my skin prep from Muron that I have works better than this. But if someone doesn't want a heavier barrier, well it's not heavy, that's the wrong way to describe it. But if someone doesn't want to use the barrier stuff that I have, then I'll just spray that. Or if they don't get super, super oily, like there may be like a mildly oily person then I'll just use a spray. So the other two things that I have is the Scandinavia oil control and bridal setting sprays. These are amazing setting sprays. Just I love setting sprays so much. So I haven't really always had setting sprays in my kit. I've always used them on myself um, and then halfway through this year I started using setting sprays uh, incorporating them. Like I had my Urban Decay setting sprays, which Scandinavia actually makes for Urban Decay, but um, I never grabbed them to use them. And now I'm just trying to incorporate that more. Um, sometimes I still have people just get out of my chair without me spraying them down because they're always leaving really quick or something. Uh, so yeah, 
that was that pouch so we're gonna move on to the next one the next one I have is all my eyeshadow palettes and again this is a large um, Zuka pouch typically this is like my carry all always going somewhere makeup kit you always have to have a Kat Von D shade light contour palette because look how gorgeous that is so yes I actually have some of that on today um, it's it's one of my favorite contouring palettes and it's really usable for everybody I've found um, this is actually a really new one that I just put in my kit because I managed to use a whole one this year so I'm back. Uh, let's see I have my Anastasia Beverly Hills Ooh, that's a mouthful uh, brow palette um, some colors I like more than others apparently uh, but this is just a shadow based brow palette that I use for clients um, I have the Naked 2 Urban Decay Basics palette um, now don't judge this one there's a chunk missing because I dropped it but this is I don't really grab this one all the time but this is just here for extra um, shadows just in case if I'm doing like a, a more natural look it does come in handy and then I have the Naked Basics I have the first one too so you might as well have that one in your kit too right um, again there is just the one shade that I like Naked 2 that's what it's called um, and yeah so I don't really grab these all the time I just have them in there just in case now I have the first Naked I think everybody uses this one I think this is most people's go-to for bridal. Um, I obviously have my two favorite contouring eye shades that I use in this palette. And then some of the other ones aren't really used that much. This is my go-to. I love this palette so much. Um, the next one I have is the Naked 2. And then with this one, sorry that mirror um this is the one i use now remember how i was talking about that i use eyeliner shadow this is actually blackout and that's the one i use a lot so there's just a little hole that i've made <laughs> over the time uh this is actually a fatal uh it broke and dropped everywhere when i was on a job and i couldn't fix it because the stuff dropped on the ground um i really don't use that color very much but i was really sad now, out of this palette, I tend to like Booty Call. And let's see. Yeah, Verge. And then the next one, Naked Free. So, there's a theme because I have Naked Heat in here too. So, I feel like these palettes are really good for bridal looks. You can get a lot of versatile looks. So, the Naked 3 though, I don't really use that much. Um, it's just there if someone wants like more blushy pinky tones so I like this palette so I tend to carry it it's not taking up too much space I like it um, I used to carry the naked smoky palette in my in my bag and I only used it once last year for my bridal season and when I say last year it's this year but my season is over um, so I only used it once for one bride and at that point like, it doesn't need to be in my case anymore. Um, I did a lot of cleanup when I converted to this new case um, for products that I no longer felt I needed. And there was quite a few, you know, see you later products. So the next palette that I do have is the Naked Heat, which is a gorgeous palette. Um, sorry, it doesn't fold, so the mirror. Let's do this. Okay. So there's that. Um, this one is still relatively new and again with the bridal looks I don't really use it a lot because I don't have a lot of demand for the orange warm tones. Um, I have used low blow and um, ounce. Yeah, ounce is a good highlight. So those are the two overly used. Um, not really overly used. There's like a small indent. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. 
small indent in that one but yeah so okay the next palette I, I just want to say I am professional I do cater to high-end I love high-end products but Morphe can we just talk about Morphe Morphe brushes this brand is good okay I will never crap on anyone who has a Morphe palette in their kit um, I get so much shit from people for having this palette in here but at the time the naked heat wasn't out and I needed a, an affordable good warm well, warm palette and this was the one and I have quite a few other um, Morphe items I have a lipstick palette that lipstick Nick signed I'm very proud of that and I actually don't use that very much but that is in my personal collection but she autographed it so I wanted to support her as an artist and I bought it and I didn't even realize that she was going to be autographing it so that just made my day. Um, and then I have a shimmer shadow palette that I used in my Lady Gaga look um, here on YouTube that I bought. And I will say that they're really good products um, they, and like I said they are affordable. Now their new collection that they just came out with, the holiday collection that they came out with, oh my god girl. Oh my god. They're amazing. I actually picked up some. I bought a Morphe holiday palette because it was really pretty. And they're a good company. I, I think that they are very comparable to Urban Decay products. Um, just their price point is a little cheaper. So, yeah. I don't care what anyone says. This is one of my go-to. So, let me talk about this palette. I'm just rambling about other shit. Okay, so like I said, it was a warm palette when I needed one, and this shade, oh, this shade right here is when I go and put someone's eyeshadow primer on, I always set it with a shadow. And this is overly dipped because this is the go-to now. Because I have the Urban Decay Heat palette now, I rarely use this palette, so everything down, I rarely use now. These two browns. They have been used, but this is the darken up looks. So if someone doesn't like buck in the naked palette, they're like, no, it's not dark enough. Let's go darker. I will whip this bad boy out and we'll use one of those two shades to go darker. So those are the palettes that I have in this one. And then if I have a bride who like wants something extra special done and I don't have the palette normally in my kit, I'll throw it in here. It's not a big deal. Um, that's why I always do a trial. I love doing trials because for one, I get to know my client, um, it gives me a chance to get acquainted, but also we get to talk about makeup and things that they're into or what they're looking for on their wedding day. Um, and then I can pre-plan because if I don't have it at the trial and they're like, oh, I really wanted to do that, then I can always bring it and we can try it on the wedding day. Um, Sometimes, not all the time, because sometimes I don't want to try something new if a bride is already expecting one thing because um, they may not be used to it. So I want them to be comfortable. So if you've already done one look, I tend to just try this day. But we can always spice it up. I did have one bride this year switch it up on me. Um, we had a really bold look that we did at the trial, and then she went for a more plummy look. Which it turned out really good. It was really pretty. So in that case, it's okay because at that point the bride's like, no, I don't want to be as bold as I originally wanted. Let's do this, and that's okay. So okay. So the last one that I have is another large one, and this is like more face um, stuff and lips. So um, I love my Becca highlighters these are amazing so um the oh the one that I use the most this one's moonstone this one I don't use a lot so I just have a color for every skin tone though so this one is my favorite this is champagne pop it's my go-to um this one is pearl 
which is a white. Um, I have used this on darker skin tones. I love how it looks if they're okay with the white because it'll kind of be a little, not bold highlighter, but it'll definitely show. Um, Opal is my other one. This is Opal. Now, this is a highlighter that I'd use on someone of color too because it just, it blends into their skin so nice. And I do use golds like a gold hued one. I wouldn't use champagne pop on them. It has a pink undertone to it. Um, so I try to stay away from stuff that has more pinks in it for someone of color, but just darker skin tones. I try to stay away from the pinks. Um, and then this I have, I do carry Eclipse by Jeffree Star Cosmetics in my kit, but I don't grab for it. Um, this is really pretty. I actually have it on today and the problem I have with it is I feel like this shade matches my skin tone so for me it does not work as a highlighter champagne pop is normally my go-to for a highlighter for myself um, but this looks beautiful on someone who is way paler than I am I do have um, the Too Faced Candlelight this used to be my go-to highlighter for people if you watch some of my uh fast forward boudoir videos i've posted which i have two on my channel um i highlight with this in that video i don't really use it very much anymore but it is in my kit just because it can't part with it can't part with it i know i already have the kat von d contouring palette in my kit but I have Chocolate Soleil by Too Faced Cosmetics in every shade because this for the longest time was my go-to. They, their formula is just really good. They smell like chocolate, which is a perk and they blend really well. So I still have these in here just in case. My Kat Von D isn't working for somebody because sometimes if you're too pale the Kat Von D won't help or if you're too dark the Kat Von D won't work either. So the next product I have is my Too Faced Love Flush palette. So pretty. So it has just little, I don't want to say sample size, but just little um, versions of the blush that they have. I own a couple of these in the Big Hearts. It's easier when it's in a palette form to carry around versus individual products like these because it takes up a lot of space. So these are the six um, blushes that I have and that's in my kit. And I'm adding because I bought from the Sephora VIB sale, I'm adding a tort um, blush collection, which will give me more colors to choose from. Because right now, I tend to just always go with Love Hangover, which is this one. I never really adventure out because I feel like some of these are still more of like a contour. So like Baby Love, I feel like... It's a little dark in my opinion. So I just, I don't know. I'm trying to open up more with blushes and I figured 20% off. That, yeah, I'm gonna try it. So I'm kind of excited for the new one to come. Hopefully it'll be here soon. I don't know, okay. So this palette right here, this is my lipsticks. So this side is more bold and then this side is my more naturals. These are not all MAC, I will admit that. These, this is a MAC palette I bought and then I dumped my lipsticks in. Because people who knew me um, a couple years ago know that I showed up with lipsticks that were in these little, little pots. Because I depotted them out of the lipsticks, but I put them in pots so I could see them better. It would just be a mess. I'd be like scratching through all my lipsticks trying to find the perfect one and instead now they're on a palette and I can just pick and choose from okay the next palettes I have are my unzipped palettes now these are the original unzipped and the gold so um 
This one's the original, which I used for my eyes today. And then this is the gold palette. Now I just have these in here as a backup because sometimes um, the, the Urban Decay golds do not show up as sparkly or someone wants to go a little more dramatic with their eye. Now these are not my go-to, like I'm using them all the time palettes. These are just extra precautionary palettes in my kit that I felt were useful um, just in case. Now the last palette in this case is my Urban Decay Full Spectrum palette. And you're like, full spectrum, why do you have that palette in your game? Okay, if you don't know what this palette is, it is a very, very fun and colorful palette. Um, the formulas are okay in this palette. This isn't my favorite. I'm actually trying to get my hands on a pro palette from Sugar Pill. Because those colors are amazing. I love... I, just, I love the blendability of them and everything, but until then, this is the closest to a full spectrum palette I have. Because sometimes you'll have a bride or a client say, oh, I want to incorporate purples into my look. Oh, I want to incorporate green or blue. And as I showed you previously, I have just a lot of like neutral toned palettes in my kit. So this one I feel is versatile enough to where I could achieve that and then if I need to get a different palette I do. Um because like I said the formula is not the best like this this one's okay. I also own the Kat Von D um very colorful palette. I can't remember what it's called. Um but it's huge. I can't carry it in my kit. It's so huge. It's like, you know, huge. I actually want to sell it because I don't use it. I don't, I don't play with it. And this, the same issue is with Kat Von D and Urban Decay, those colors do not pop. So if you are putting on, you know, these fun colors, they're not popping like they should, in my opinion. I'm not, I'm not trying to bash them. I love the brands. They're, they're some of my favorites. Like I said, I, I have tons of Urban Decay in my kit, and I have the Kat Von D Contour Palette, and I own all the, um, the palettes that look like the Shade Light Palette. I can't remember their names, but I own, like, all those. So, I, I do love these brands, but when it comes to the more colorful stuff, it's a letdown. Now, the issue I have with Sugar Pill is that their stuff is always sold out. And a pro palette is going to cost me $120. So you get like 12 pans in their kit that they'll give you, but that's a lot. That, that's a lot of money to invest in a palette, to be honest. Um, because I think this one was rel relatively affordable, and then the Kat Von D one was, I think, 65 I can't remember. Urban K is not that expensive. I think it was probably like 50 something and I have the Vice palettes from Urban Decay, but the same issue, the colors aren't vibrant enough. Now, the $120 for Sugar Pill, I will drop that change. I'm just waiting until some of their pans come back into stock so I can have the full spectrum of the rainbow. Um, there's a red color I've been wanting, and it's been sold out for weeks now. Uh, well, first they were sold out of the Pro pans, and then they were sold out of the red. And they've been doing conventions, so I'm not mad. And I understand products, when, when they're in demand, they go fast. So um, I am just saving up for it and then hopeful wishing one day I'll go on the website and they'll be there. Sorry, I can rant about makeup all the time and I feel like this is what this video has turned into today. But that is okay because this is a what's in my kit and we're just bullshitting too. So, but that was everything in this bag. Um, I'm actually going to put everything back. But, you know, some of these products I've been using for a long time. Urban Decay was like one of the first companies that I started investing with when I found higher end makeup. It was just something I gravitated towards. I really enjoyed their colors and their products. Um, and then... I slowly discovered Too Faced, and then I found Lorac in all that too. So, 
I, I have a lot of makeup, <laughs> but this is just the stuff that I take all the time with me to gigs. Um, and like I said, if I need to pack something special, I will. So I hope you liked the video. I, uh, I have a lot of makeup. <laughs> and if you ever want me to do, like, a makeup haul, not a haul, but like a what the hell do you have video where I just go through all my makeup I own and talk about it, let me know. Leave a comment if you're interested in that because I have a bunch of shit. And there's probably stuff that I could just get rid of because I don't use it. But yeah, just let me know. That completes this video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this, feel free to give a thumbs up. And if you're a new person to my channel, feel free to subscribe. Um, if you have any questions about my kit, just let me know. Um, you can leave some comments down below. Or what's your favorite products that maybe I carry in my kit? And if you have any questions about like the Zuka bags or anything or any of the products that I showed, feel free to, again, leave a comment. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.